G'day North Queensland, Mark here from North Queensland Freedom Network. I'm here with Len Harris. Um, before watching this video, I advise you go back to the Do We Own Our Own Property video. The uh, link will be in the description. Um, so Les, oh Len, Len. sorry. <laughs> sorry mate. Um, do I own my own property, I think is the first question a lot of people would have on their minds. Yes, in actuality you do and that's even uh, assured by the, the Queensland Government uh, in exactly the same legislation that they actually make all of your titles void. So they say in one hand that you can't have any documents that prove you own your home, but trust us, we're the Queensland Government, we're guaranteeing you that you do. How much faith can I have in such a statement from the Queensland Government? Well, uh, that obviously depends on the average person, but when you look at the fact that the Queensland Government can alter any act that they bring in, they can guarantee it today, and if they are of a bloody mind, take that guarantee away tomorrow if it is to their advantage. So, um you obviously got this ball rolling. You've brought in um, Rod Cullerton from the Great Australia Party, his legal team, Darren Dixon and uh, Daryl O'Brien. Um, who else have we got? Oh, and AFL solicitors. And so what was the other name of the person who's also we have to thank for all okay. this? Okay, uh, well, at, at the moment, we actually have Matt Hopkins, uh, one of the associates from AFL. And it's worthy to note that AFL is the solicitor firm that actually took on BHP on behalf of, of their uh, employees uh, and actually uh, got the, the mandate for them to be uh, vaccinated, removed. So they are uh, a, a group of solicitors, a company that have uh, runs on the board. So. Matt Hopkins uh, is the associate that's uh, appointed to our case and uh, we're working uh, very much with Matt and another special lady, Liesl, uh, who is working with Matt to frame the questions that are actually going to go to the Queensland Government and it will ask in each case where did the Queensland Government derive the power to carry out the function that they did. And what was an equally as important is what was the process that they went through to achieve. And that's very, very uh, important in relation to this new act that I'm actually holding. This particular act, uh, the Queensland Government claims to actually transfer the titles office to a proprietary limited company. They have established the company. It is there on ASIC. Uh, you can see its ACN number there. However, the details of the directors of that company are withheld. We want to know who are the directors. Uh, that's step one. Step two, this particular act. Now, in the proclamation of this actual act, the Queensland Government acknowledges that previously this act was the Debt Reduction Savings Act 2021. So they have replaced that act with the Queensland Future Fund Title Registry Act 2021. And in this act, the act actually appoints a proprietary limited company as the operator of the titles office in Queensland. And the company is Queensland's Titles Registry Proprietary Limited. Uh, it was actually uh, registered as operating on the 1st of July uh, last year. The act actually lays on the table. That means it is actually physically placed on the table in Parliament and sits there for a year. And in that year, our Treasurer, Cameron Dick, under this Act, 
purports to have the power to transfer state assets into the proprietary limited company up to and including the 1st of July this year. The most astounding thing in the Act actually is that the Act also provides the Treasurer the ability to transfer a person who is a public servant to the proprietary limited company. And it would appear on the actual lettering of the Act that said person, once they are transferred to this Act, only have 12 months to actually appeal their appointment to go back to becoming a public servant. Now these are, are just absolutely astounding, unbelievable, outlandish uh, powers. So one thing that we're requiring Cameron Dick to actually provide for the Queensland people is, first of all, what process did you go through in actually selecting the Titles Registry Proprietary Limited? Secondly, where did you derive the power to then make, the, we refer to this act as the operator, where did you get the power then to actually give the operator the right to actually decide and what the, the, uh, the actual treasurer gets, the proprietary limited company gets to determine the actual cost of registering a title in Queensland. Then it goes on to say that the operator gets to collect and keep those funds. Well, if the purpose of this Act actually is to reduce Queensland debt, as it states in the start of the Act, how then can the proprietary limited company that is now the operator of the titles office pay down debt if they get to keep all of the funds from registering titles in Queensland. So it is actually a conundrum within itself and it will be interesting for uh, the Queensland people to actually be uh, aware of the outcome of this case. So the case is being heard in the Supreme Court in Queensland, uh, in Cairns, at 10 o'clock on the 20th of May, uh, so that's next month, only a few weeks away, where all of these issues uh, will be brought to the court. Whether we get answers or not, uh, we have to wait and find out. But irrespective of that, uh, this will not be the end of this process. I would assume if the judge was to find in favour of us, and that is the people of Queensland, uh, no doubt the Queensland Government would appeal that to the Queensland Supreme Appeals Court before three judges, uh, and we will have processes for coping with that. Um, do you want everybody to come down and show their support on the 20th of May? Absolutely. I. Uh, <coughs> I would like to see the courtroom itself, uh, which only holds about 50 odd people. I would like to see that overspill and fill the entire forecourt of the courthouse. What we say to people very, very earnestly, this is not a protest as in whistles and uh, making lots of noise and waving flags. We want people to be there as a silent majority. Because irrespective of how eloquent or how eloquently we can actually put this case, and we will, right, it is the pure sense of public support behind it that will cause the Queensland Government eventually to withdraw this bill. Not this particular one, the land, comma, explosives, and other legislative amendment act which cancels all of our title documents. Right. Thank you for the opportunity again to talk to the people.
thank you especially to the people of Queensland who've donated towards the uh, silent majority court fund and uh, please we will need to keep on going so if you go to the website www.thesilentmajority.org.au and make a donation in actuality you're making a donation to yourself if every person in Queensland who owns a property uh, donated $20 towards this project right, we would have enough money to take us through to the High Court no worries, thank you very much. Um, definitely people, jump onto that website and check it out. There's a lot of good stuff there and you'll be able to keep everybody up to date with what's transpiring. Yes. And yeah, of course, if you can come down, I know I'm going to be down there. Um, come say good day and yes, good thanks. luck. And thank you very much for your great work. Thank you very much. And thank you to all the Queensland people. And finally, Len, this is obviously something that's being addressed here in Queensland, but does it affect other states as well? Yes, in actuality, it does. When uh, O'Rourke took the New South Wales Act to what was then COAG, Coalition of Australian Government uh, organ uh, Organisation, it took 12 months for all of the other states and territories to ad actually adopt the New South Wales Act as the process of actually each state and territory doing their electronic recording. So we have a Queensland national, so it is an electronic lodgement uh, law, Queensland, and so New South Wales will have one, Victoria will eventually have to have one, South Australia, WA, Tasmania, and, and the territories. The other interesting aspect as a result of a New South Wales state government becoming quasi-federal law is that COAG had no legislative support and definitely no constitutional recognition. So we've got an entity sitting out there in the ether that is not legislatively nor constitutionally supported that is actually governing the most important thing to every family in Australia, their home. So it, it uh, dictates how people right throughout Australia, how their title deed is actually stored. So this was done by COAG of the day, actually creating another level of, of entity called ARNEC, A-R-N-E-C-C. -C. And ARNEC is a, an actual association of every registrar in every state and territory. And it's through ARNEC now that ARNEC itself as an entity authorises the private companies uh, and uh, the, currently there are three. Uh, PEXA is the major one. Simply Australia is the second one. And uh, Purcell, Proprietary Limit, is the third company. Now, these three companies actually carry out all of the electronic uh, finalisation of titles. So the details from the, the seller to the purchaser and ultimately the transfer of that lot to the purchaser is held on one of those three private companies, not a government entity. So as private corporations, they are subjective to lots of things. First of all, they are subjected to being hacked and people say, oh, well, no, they wouldn't be able to hack them. Well, back in May of last year, hackers put 8.4 billion passwords. So that's more, more passwords than there are people on Earth. Along with the password, they also put the entire personal identity of the person who had that passport. So they were able to 
hack into places like Amazon. So if you have had an Amazon uh, um, uh, log on, right, your, your identity and your password are in that 8.4 billion. If you, uh, at that point in time, had signed up to LinkedIn, uh, they had been hacked, their details are up there. Government departments are up there. So how are three private corporations going to protect the fact that it is absolutely guaranteed uh, hack proof? So that's one problem. The second but more major problem is even PEXA, which reportedly holds 70% of those transactions. And yes, they will have a little bit of binary code with your name and your lot number, but that is not a title deed. I've been uh, uh, <laughs> told by directors from PEXA, we do not hold the title deed but they have the details of the transaction okay so but the bigger problem is that PEXA itself is actually uh, in the market to actually do a share um, what they call an IPO uh, an initial public offering where people can buy shares in PEXA so if PEXA goes ahead and does that, that means they have shareholders who will, will be looking for dividends on their shares. Now currently there's only $280 million worth of fees in the entire uh, uh, sales of property in, as in fees for those sales. That's not going to provide uh, PEXA with the funds they're going to need to provide dividends to their uh, shareholders. And so you can use your own imagination where that's going to come from. So that's one. One uh, issue is they go public, uh, then there are shareholders involved. The other one also is that if PEXA decides to sell the company outright. Now that could go to any entity worldwide. So the point I'm making is in 20 years or 30 years time, the most of us elderly ones who are involved in this, we won't be here. It will be our siblings who will be running around trying to find what company where in the world actually holds the details of their property. I'm referring very specially not to say referring to the title deeds because they don't exist. So to answer your question that's the long way around but I think people need to know the structure of, of how every title in Australia is now actually held and what the probability or possibility uh, of having trouble uh, knowing long term where those titles are or details are going to be stored. Because for a hundred years we've been able to walk into a government department and, and there is all of your details that no longer exist today Australia wide. And thank you for that question. My pleasure. Uh, it's, uh, it's disturbing. I've got a pretty wild imagination and I can imagine some very horrible things coming from this. To me, it's going to tie into the digital identity that they're, exactly. they're talking about. Oh. It's also going to tie into their digital currency. And while we're speaking of digital currency, we all saw what happened in Canada uh, when Trudeau froze the bank accounts of certain people in Canada and mysteriously, within 48 hours, totally recanted it. And I will give you the answer why he had to recant, because he got a quick phone call from the, in the IMF to tell him that he was compromising their ability to sell their, uh, their electronic ID. So there's a classic example, if we end up with electronic ID 
we end up with electronic uh, currency, click of the fingers and they can be both switched off. Separate entity, there is a possibility that this is where this process of the Queensland Government is taking us. So some very disturbing times ahead and yeah, yeah. I guess people really got to be aware of this digital stuff. Yeah. It's just very dangerous. Yeah, um, yeah I think we better leave it there because we could probably <laughs> theorise, you know, because yeah. I mean, let's face it, they, what was once a conspiracy theory is now a conspiracy fact. Correct. It is all based on fact and Queensland or New South Wales government's own legislation. They cannot deny it. Thank you. No worries, thank you very much mate, cheers.